Turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm happy to be in the presence of God. Happy convention to everyone here. Yeah? Praise God. Today we are going to be looking at income generation. Before I start, I would like to thank the pastorate for this opportunity uh, um, to stand here to speak to you. And I also like to thank God for this opportunity. I pray that as we learn today, that the Lord will open our eyes to see deep truth about our finances in Jesus' name. We are looking at income generation. Income generation and management. When the word income comes to your heart or your mind, what do you think of? You think of money. Praise the Lord. You think of money. But first of all, before we talk about money, let's define the word income. I hope we are with our writing materials because we are going to be learning a lot today. We are going to be learning a lot. So I'd like us to write money, income rather. Income is money received on a regular basis for work or through investment. Money received on a regular basis from time to time. Money received. That is what income is about. Praise the Lord. It could be yearly. It could be monthly. It could be daily. It could be weekly. But let it be on a regular basis. Praise the Lord. That is what income is. You cannot talk about income without talking about money. We can't talk about income without talking about money. That takes us to money. If I may ask, what is money? What is money? We all know that money is currency, a legal tender, a miss of exchange. Our economic students will be able to help us and enlighten us more on that. Money is anything that is used as a medium of exchange. We'll go down to the history of money for us to understand this topic very well. Before money became a, a paper, there was what we call trade by butter. Back in the days in Africa, if somebody has cow and another person has a bag of vegetable, they'll have to, uh, maybe the person needs meat and this other person needs vegetable, they'll have to do exchange for them to be able to transact. Now, the challenge with that kind of uh, exchange or that kind of uh, transaction was that if I need a dress and the person that has the dress does not need a shoe and is a shoe that I want to give out, it becomes a problem. Maybe the person needs a bag. It becomes a problem. So that was why that trade by butter was no longer useful. It was not, there was not a need for another means of exchange to come into place. And that was when cowries came in. Cowries was used at a point, gold in some countries was used. Before the British colonized us, we used pounds before our notes that we are using now, which is the Naira. Praise the Lord. We all know the Naira notes, right? That is our means of exchange in Nigeria and it's backed up by the federal government. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Now money is anything that is a means of exchange. And that is what it should remain in our life. A means of exchange, not a God. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Now we would also talk about finance. Finance is the process of raising fund, raising money, providing money. Praise the Lord. If you have a project of finance or anything, you have to raise money for that particular purpose. It's the process. This, the, the, the thing that you do that help you to raise fund, raise capital, that is what finance is called. Now, why do we need money? Why do we need to generate income? Why do we need to make money? That is what this question is. Why do we need money? We all have different definitions or different reasons in our hearts why we need money. We all have it in our heart. As I'm asking this question now, somebody will say, I need money to do this, I need money to do that. But a general reason for money is that money is a means of payment. 
Money is a means of payment. Money is needed to make payment for goods and service. Money is needed to finance you on a daily basis. And that financing is done till the day you die. That is why you need money. You will need to use money. Have you seen anybody that will say, I don't need money. I don't use money. Praise the Lord. Have you seen anybody like that? Or, I want to stop using money from today. Today, I'm going to stop using money. I will not use money. Is it possible? It's not. That is why we need to generate money. Praise the Lord. Because it is something that you will use till the day you die. Praise the Lord. So, money is a means of payment. You use it to pay for things that are important. Things that you need. There was no... Everybody that came here today used money to get here. Except those that their houses are closed. You use money to get here. Whether you fire your car or you took transport, it was money that you used. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. It is used as a means of payment. It is used to provide shelter for you. It, it is used for your feeding. The three basic things in life, shelter, feeding, and um, clothing. It is money that you used to achieve it. Praise the Lord. You use money to achieve it. So it is needed. For you to sleep under a roof, you have to pay for a house. Praise the Lord. For you to eat three square meal, you have to use money. And also, for you to um, have good health facility, money is required. For good education, you cannot educate your child by yourself. You cannot educate yourself. You need to pay somebody to educate you. Praise the Lord. Or rather, your parents need to pay for somebody to educate you. That is why we need money. Money is a defense. It opens door and it brings honor and removes shame. That is why we need money in the household of God. It's a defense. There are some places that I may go to today that they might not just listen. But if Ignatius gets there, at once they open the door. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. That is because he has money. Money is a defense. And that is why we in the household of faith, we must strive to ensure that we get it. Owing to the fact that God has given us authority over it already. Praise the Lord. It is just the means and the medium we apply to make it. And God will teach us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, what are the ways we can make money? That's where we are going to now. Now we've seen what money is, income generation. Now, what are the ways you can make money? Most of us already know plenty ways, I know. Most of us are already making money, I know. But no knowledge is wasted because you can make more. Is there anything like too much money? No. There is always room for more. If you have finished blessing yourself and you have finished blessing everybody around you, start blessing nations. That is why you must make more. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise Master Jesus. Three ways to make money. Number one, you do something for other people. A way you can make money is by doing something for other people. They are, these are people that do jobs. There are category, different category of people here. Category one people. They uh, apply for a job and they do the job and they are paid for it. Praise the Lord. Most of us are in that category. The salary earner, in other words. You do something for other people and get paid. That is number one way that we are looking at today to make money. That number two, you make something or provide a service and charge money you can make something you can design something or you can provide a service or sell a particular product and make money those are the business owner the entrepreneurs that is what they do practically they sell services and products and they transform it into money by charging people praise the lord then number theory you use money to make money which is investment investment investing in different things that will bring more money to you praise god now we are going to be we are going straight to the category one now you are already doing a job 
you already have a job that is for us that the salary and now but we know that in present time nigeria one job that you do from eight to five will not be sufficient to foot your bill especially with the way things are increasing by the day it will not be sufficient to care or cater for your need no matter the amount you are paid because i learned some things some time back i was talking to my colleagues sometime i was like hey i wish i can be promoted like five steps up so that i'll start any as big as those big or gas on the top at the top and she looked at me and laughed she said do you know that when you get there that money will still not be enough i was like huh what do you mean it will be okay i'll be fine what do you mean she was like, no, because when they promote you like five times and you start earning like them, your taste will change. Your circle will change because you now start holding meetings with them. You can, they will promote you and not expect the results that they bring. And for you to bring that result, it has to be constant training, meeting and all of that. You start mingling with them. With time, you start to think the way they think. And once you start thinking that way, your taste and preferences, your circle will change. And then the money will no longer be enough. Praise the lord so no matter how much you earn you will still need more praise god you will still need more and that is why as a salary earner you should not be satisfied with what you are doing you should strive to do more things and there are a million and one other things you can add to your salary by the time you do your eight to five job there are other things other job that you can add by the wayside that you can either do uh, online or do weekends praise god and i'm going to be listing most of those jobs here and i pray that the lord will help us anyone that uh, would you know um be beneficial to us will pick it praise the lord another extra job that a salary earner can do is photography these days people even do photography as full-time jobs they go into photography they you know do all the snapping and everything and because of the continuous wedding continuous celebration there is always need for photograph birthday ceremony and all of that so photography is something that you can actually go into even if you're a salary earner praise the lord another one is graphics designing now let's let's not say okay only the salary earner that's what we're talking about you may already be a business owner and you still want to venture into other uh, aspects. This is for you as well. You can look into different uh, aspects like this. The graphics designing, drop shipping. Drop shipping is, for instance, you see somebody that is selling a particular product and you are, you are, you, you are not selling the product, but you can get a buyer. You, set, you pick buyer, you look for buyers. After looking for those buyers, you connect them to the seller, you make sales and take your profit easily. Praise the Lord. And most people are leveraging on that currently in Nigeria society right now. Praise the Lord. Another one is selling of airtime and data. You can decide to, it depends on how you want to do it. Most times when you hear selling of airtime, most people they are like, ah, ah, uh, how much airtime, is it not small money? But I've come to realize that money, no matter how small, is better than you make it, better than, it's, it's good that you make it. I'll use myself as an example. Two weeks ago, I was thinking of doing something. I was like, I don't want to touch this particular money I have, I want to, what did I do? I went to Mission Road. I went to pick earrings as small as uh, 250 300 and i picked a lot of them took to my office and sold for you know increase the price a bit and i sold and i made money that was i wanted to use for that particular thing at a time so it's not saying that it's an extra income and anything extra that can add to your already income is a plus for you so the, the the thing most time is that you are deceived you are like how much will i see inside 100 naira 200 naira but if you don't see that 100 naira and 200 naira it's still a loss to you praise god so no matter how small you can still do it as far as it's not taking your whole time or your whole resources you can go into it just do it still make that money while you are making other um, um what's making money from other means because it is multiple streams of income that can help us today in the nigeria society praise the lord um photocopy and printing business online registration most of us we are good with computer 
you can just you know do online registration for jam that season that that jam is going on okay i don't have the old time you can just do it for that period make money from it and you look at other ways it's just for you to be sensitive of the season praise the lord football viewing center for our men you already do your eight to eight to five job you can have a viewing center just rent a small shop put the decoder and just put somebody there that will be money there look for a way that you monitor the income coming in and you know you have picked up money is already coming from that end praise the lord there is pedicure and manicure service like most women are going to spa these days you know there is money there there is also the barbing saloon hairdressing saloon um bookshop in those of us that are in the school environment bookshops yes in school environment you can make a lot lot of money from there past questions and uh, answer uh, answers related textbook to what will enhance their knowledge praise the lord then another one we can leverage on in especially again in school environment is students wears fairly used clothes maybe you are a small salary and you are looking for ways to make money quick you can use go to campuses i have a friend there when she graduated from school she was complaining she said she's tired of staying at home she's tired of staying at home the next thing she did she went to where they pick clothes she picked clothes and took to uniben or one by the time she was done she was like fit i made a lot of money are you sure you're not coming to this business that was what she told me praise the lord then we were we were we just graduated from school praise god that is something that you can also leverage on real estate agents you can be that too. you can collect contacts who, people who want to sell property it depends on how you want to do it people who have property to sell people who have houses to rent just get contacts put your um your phone number in different strategic places i remember when we were looking for a place then it took us a lot to get that place and i was like oh god i wish i had known that this is a a a, 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 a as in a means of income on time we are looking for a, somebody that would just say okay link us up the few ones we had they didn't really have uh, uh, places praise the lord that is another way people are making money now praise god then soap and disinfectant um, making and all of that the list is endless event planning event planning dry cleaning business this one is very in fact is making waves all around the town right now because people are so busy sometimes they can't wash their clothes they can't clean their houses and all of that i know somebody who is making it big time in dry cleaning business his own uh, 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 what he does mainly is that he will just come to if you if you want people to clean your house he will send two of his uh, staffs to go clean the place you pay him in a week he can clear up to 10 houses that's a lot of money and he is not an employer of labor praise god praise master jesus i hope we are following you can also be a fitness instructor not fully where that i've noticed that in this supply road i don't know if there is but along this supply road i've not seen any fitness or any gym or any and it's good for lifestyle if you open a fitness shop people will patronize you because many people want to exercise but they don't have the motivation but once you start it now you see that they'll start dropping by the only one i know is down to say um sorry Ubawa. praise god praise master jesus driving services cab services brand influencing poultry business cable tv they are endless dance teacher cac registration in my office that is what is trending now you see everybody they want to register your business once you say you want to open a corporate account is it registered once you say no okay i can register it for you do you have any friend who wants to register that's extra income praise the lord now this might not be your own feed but i must have mentioned one feed or one related feed to you praise god it is good we leverage on all of this because it will help us in the long run praise master jesus also importation business importation business dj for our students do you know that there is no there is really it is difficult to see a christian dj it is difficult it's the truth 
But you can make this collection with your browsing. You can make collection and become a Christian DJ. Praise God. And when you become a Christian DJ, Christians will look for you. And you'll be making money because you are rare. You are not just much in, the, in town. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. And that is some of the side business we can do with our job that we already have. By the side. You can close from your work on Friday and they are calling you for an event to MC or to be a DJ. Praise God. Now, if you don't think of doing that, nobody will call you. On Saturday, you're just wasting watching match, watching football, or watching Telemudo, or one irrelevant thing that will not add to your life, when you can be using that time to make money. Praise Jesus. Another, um, the second category of people who are the business owners. Now, the first category, you also have to listen. The job owners, you also have to listen to the second part I'm talking about now. This is because now that you now have the mindset of having a side business, you will need to grow it. Praise God. You will need to grow it. You know, I told us that there are three uh, ways you can make money. By working for someone a job, by having your own business, and by investing, make, using money to make more money. Now, the second category, which are the business owners, they are the ones I'm talking to now. And you in category one, who already have the mind of having an extra business, this is also for you. Now, you are a business owner. How do you generate more money? How do you make more money in that business you are already doing? Now, let's listen attentively. Number one, you should understand your financials. You cannot take this away from your business. If you do not understand how money comes in and go out of your business, you will not know if you are making progress or if you are failing. That is why you must understand your financials. I will not go into details of financial statement, cash flow, profit and loss. I will just say it in the simple way that we will understand. Know your expenditure. Have a paper, a book that you keep record. January, expenditure. I bought this. I bought this. I did this. Paid staff, salaries, everything to the last penny that you spend on expenses. Then also uh, trace your income. Every single money that is coming in. Praise the Lord. You must be able to keep proper record. If you don't keep proper record of your business, you will not be able to know if you are growing or not. You'll just be doing your business in deception. <laughs> Praise God. You will not know if you are growing. You will not know if you are stagnant. But if you keep record, maybe in January, you kept your record. And you, after subtracting your expense from your expenditure, you discover that you still have 10,000 Naira. Oh, let me use high figure. 10 million Naira free for yourself. You, you know that, okay, I made 10 million in January. In February, you check, you made 9 million. Have you made profit? Have you, have you increased or you've decreased? You decrease. But if you don't keep record, you won't know. You think I'm always making profits. But profit has its own side. Like in my company, they'll say profit is profit. But profit has its grade. There's small profit, there's huge profit. Praise God. Now, you'll notice that 10 million naira in January, 9 million naira in February. Maybe in March, 15 million naira. Then, the reason why you have to understand your financial is for you to understand what you are doing right and what you are not. And you know when you are doing well and when you are not. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Whether big or small business, understand your financial and take record of it number two create a business map create a business map your business is already running draw out a map a pattern how you intend this business what you want it to be in the next one month what you want it to be in the next five months how you want it to be in the next one year how you want it to be in the next 10 years just like that draw a map of what you want to see what you want it to be and how you intend to make it be you want to move from point a to point b how are you going to do it you have to have a plan you have to draw a map you cannot work on assumption i'm going to assume and just get it done no in business work and principles is what make you successful all successful businessmen if you ask them they applied principles Praise God. So you have to draw a map and take steps to ensure that that map pulls true. 
set realistic goals. Now, you want to move from point A to point B. You've just started the business. You are in point A right now. Point B is 10 million naira in the next six months. And you expect to just get it like that. It's not realistic. Praise God. It depends on what you are doing though. But draw a realistic plan. A plan that you know that is attainable. A plan that you know that you can achieve. is achievable. And is measurable. And is within time frame. Don't just draw a... a, a plan that okay this is how i'm going to do it. no time frame you must say in the next six months praise the lord in the next one year this is what i want and how i want it to be praise the lord and from baby step you take solid step over time because what you keep doing it becomes a part of you i had a, i have a friend who say everything is first difficult before it becomes easy everything is first difficult the first day you do a particular thing it will seem as if you want to ah, can i can i survive this can i survive this but in another five years you are not a grandmaster you are encouraging people to do it that is it so from baby step you start taking solid step but have a realistic goal and remember there is no competition you are in no competition with anybody in terms of your pace or the speed at which you are going to if you have a plan you see some people in business they are not bothered about what their competition is doing because they already have a plan and they know that in the next 10 years their competition might not even have the vision that they have praise god because they have a plan but if they don't have a plan any thing that the competitor do which way to swap them to the right and to the left that is why you have to draw a plan and have realistic goal the next one which is number four identify problem in the business why am i not making profits why is mr johnson making more profits than me why is mr b why is he making why is he doing well why is he doing better than i'm doing you should ask question identify problem what is stopping me from making profits is it my attitude or is it my staff attitude or is it just laziness praise the lord or is it my sales pattern probably i'm not selling enough or probably i'm not uh, convincing the customer enough or maybe it's my leadership style i'm not leading my staff appropriately or even if it's a one-man business i'm not leading myself you know you have to lead yourself i'm not leading myself appropriately praise the lord leading yourself there are people that open their shop by 10. meanwhile their competition is already there by seven praise god now i want to make my hair i will not be waiting for you has not opened no way i'll go to the person who is opened and if that person if if that person attends to me like twice i might forget you even if we are close because that person has proven to me that is reliable over time praise the lord so that could be something that is injuring your business from progressing maybe it's attitude maybe you are not innovative enough you are not in, there's no innovation the business is just the way it was two years ago that's how it is now nothing is changing and you know customer they like things that are changing they like to come and see that there is growth praise the lord but there is no innovation so it's not a problem because there won't be growth in the business or maybe supply quantity supply i come today i want to buy this product you don't have uh, i'm expecting supply to come in two days okay no problem i come again in five days i want to buy uh, i'm expecting supply the last one just finished ah, i'll be like that person is not serious so i don't want to go there and not get let me just try this other guy and if that guy you know if he does if i get there and he supplies me three times he has won my heart already praise the lord praise jesus it could be supply so no matter the problem or the challenge there is always a way around things there is always a way around ask for help ask for help why am i not doing well in this part you can use your phone google or you can ask those who have been in the business before time how are they doing it what are they doing better or you can decide to improve and develop yourself develop yourself to the standard that will make the business grow praise the lord 
and ask questions or seek professional help. Maybe you have the means and resources to seek for professional help. Fine, do it. Because it's even better. People who have the skill and the knowledge, if they give it to you to do your business, you do better. Praise the Lord. Number five, in your business, hire appropriately. Hire appropriately. Like I said before, seek professional help. You focus on your strength and hire people that can leverage or do well in your weakness. Probably you are not good with keeping record. You will have to look for somebody who is good at record keeping. The person is so meticulous in that aspect. He will keep the record appropriately for you. That is what you should do. Or maybe you are not good at sales because nobody is perfect. You cannot sell. But you know that if you employ a particular person, or rather, if you want to employ somebody, the person that you should be looking out for is for somebody that can sell for you. Somebody that breeds sales, that naturally will just sell. You know there are people like that. When they sell your product, in fact, somebody was telling me, was it not it's within this month that somebody was telling me that uh, there was this shop, there was no sales girl in the shop. Or rather, a, a girl, there was no girl in the shop. The woman was always locking her shop, locking her shop, locking her shop. Then someone advised her and said, you look for girls. If you look for girls, your shop will not always be locked. If you have one challenge or the other, your girls will be there helping you. She now said, eh, hey. now say, I have a girl for you, I'll bring her. Immediately that girl started. More than 50 other guests came to the shop. Why? Probably she has this charisma. And when other guests here, they are like, what's, make, what's so special that we bought this shop? Why is she here? And they want to come. Praise God. It is just that she knows how to position herself. And she has attracted people to the shop. Now, if you are employing somebody to work for you, look for specific traits. Things that you know that are not really your strength. Don't be good in marketing. And though they, you can never have enough marketers because you will always need to market. Praise the Lord. But look for, apart from that other strength, look for what you don't have in the person you are hiring. So hire rights. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Now add value to your customer. Number six. Add value to your customer. Add value. Now this one is key. Because without your customer, there is no you. You must add value. You must add value. If you want to remain in business, how do you do this? Now, I'll use an example. I always shop. I always buy things from pharmacies. So one particular day, I went to one pharmacy. I just drove in like, okay, let me just, you know, because I had passed the ones in town. So when I got there, I wanted to buy a particular uh, product for me. And he said, uh, this thing is this amount. And I said, no, I buy it like this in other places. Why is your own different? The next thing the pharmacy guy said was, really? Serious? It was, it was the sales guy that was attending to me. But the pharmacy that is the main owner of the shop removed his hand from everything he was doing and paid attention to me. That first of all got me got my attention. It was like, excuse me, ma, you said something. You said it's cheaper in other shops. I said, yes, it's cheaper over there. Why is it own expensive? It was like, okay, we'll look into that. Give her the price she wants. Ah, in my mind, I was like, okay, that's good. I was happy because I was already feeling some other. I might have to drive back or be forced to buy it at this price. No, as, now as I was smiling and I asked for a drug, I was like, okay, I need a drug for this particular ailment. And the, uh, the man was like, I will explain to you. There's this drug and there's this drug. There's this, this is for this, this is for this, this is for this. Ah, he was lecturing me on, you know, you might say it's not really important. But at that point in time, I needed that knowledge. And I've never been to a pharmacy where they lecture me on why I should use this drug and why I should not use this drug, why this one is important for this. And why, ah, so that made me to gain, and what he was saying was actually true because the drug was prescribed some time back. So I was like, this, I gained confidence in that pharmacist at that time. Why? Because he had time for his customer. Treat that one customer the way, even if the customer is a 10 era customer, treat that customer the way you treat a billion era customer. The reason is this. You don't know what will become of him tomorrow. And if over time you have treated him well, he will not leave you and go to another person.
simple. He can never leave you. Be like, ah, there are some people you say, come and buy from me. Say, no, this woman have been, you know, the way she will be adding attachment to the, you'll not be like, buy from me. Why are you saying the person is already attached to that person? And if you have a million people attached to you like that, you are a billionaire already. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. That is why you should treat your customer. Ensure they are satisfied. Whatever you are selling, make sure they are okay. Ask question. Genuinely care about them. Genuinely. I personally have seen that. Genuinely care for your customer. If genuinely caring for your customer will make them bless you more than normal. Even if they came to do something, by the time they are leaving, they are like, okay, take this. Take this. Why? Because you care for them. You are not just a bad sis. I want to say, let me say, sell. No. You ask questions about their family. You ask how they are doing. You, they, if they see that sincere, genuine care, that you care about them, they would not leave you. Praise God. So you, you try as much as possible to add value. Feed the need that they want and make sure that they don't get your kind of service anywhere else. Make sure they don't get your kind of service anywhere else. There's somebody I buy bread from. The way he attends to me when I'm buying bread, I'm like, is it bread, ordinary bread? But I keep going there to buy bread. He's, he's gaining. I keep going there when I'm driving past. Mama, good afternoon, ma. Eh, you know, praise the Lord. And the other bread seller might just be standing by a shade there and be looking at me from the car like this. Mother, what do you want by? You know, I will keep going to that one that will always come and meet me. And he's always selling. His shop is expanding. Praise the Lord. So treat, if you want to make money, treat your customer with so much respect and dignity and they'll keep coming back to you. Next one, which is number seven. Focus on strategic innovation. Focus on strategic innovation. What is strategic innovation? Expand on existing idea. Expand on existing idea. You already, you are doing, let's take for instance, you are into photography already. You have just, maybe you rented a three bedroom, whatever to use for your photography. But for the first one year, there's no money to arrange everywhere. You just do the first uh, entrance, which is the secretary place. And maybe that's where you are even doing the photography business. With time, you will need to have a sales gear. Now, you have to be innovative. Maybe the first year I come to, to take photograph, I see you, you are the one doing sales gear. You are the one snapping. You are the one doing everything. I'll be like, hey, yeah, it's just starting. Praise the Lord. Now, you must be innovative. At one year plus in your business, it's time for you to introduce a sales gear. By the next time I'm coming, it shouldn't be you doing everything. There should be a sales gear sitting down there. Not just a sales gear that will kill your business. A professional that will treat the customer in a way that the customer will feel like, okay, then why you say, where is your madam? Oh, your madam is inside. Praise the Lord. You know, and have a photographer too that is now assisting you in the lab, you know, doing all those things. Praise God. Then by the third year, maybe I'm coming for marriage anniversary or birthday party or whatever that will bring me back. Let it be that you have, maybe it was just one room. Now it's two rooms. You are not asking me, madam, is it standard or VIP? You know, it will give me that uh, sense of that, yes, these uh, people, they are growing. They are growing. And you know Nigerians, they like to associate with growth. When they see that today you move an inch, you are moving, they'll be like, hey, Nadea, they, they, they don't want to just always go there. Oh, no, that place, no, Nadea, they snap on my picture right from time. Why? The place is growing. If the place was going down, you come back and you see that generator has gone off. They are starting it for how many hours? Will you go back? That is why you must ensure that you are innovative. Be adding things. Be adding things. Even if it's a pinch, don't let your business, don't let it be the way it was three months ago. Even if it's just to paint one side or shift your table. If you see that there is nothing, do something. Be innovative. Go online. Research on how to improve. Add other, if you don't know how to improve, add other business to it. Maybe you are doing that photography. Start laundry business. When the person is going to say, Madam, apart from snapping now, we can do your laundry for you. If you want to do laundry, see our flyers. You know, the person will be like, growth is going on here. 
give that give the customer the impression that you are doing well they want to associate with someone that is doing well and you keep making money praise the lord so be strategic in your innovation know what you need to work on and leverage on it like if we use uh, the movie industry netflix the way they took business from blockbuster we all know the story you see the way they did it overnight and blockbuster is nowhere to be found it's not net netflix everywhere be strategic in your innovation look for that's your job you are doing look for ways you can enhance it and get growth praise the lord praise jesus now leverage on your connection that's number eight leverage on your connection this one means building relationship with other people that are doing the same thing with you some people don't like it say i'll be a dresser mm, i'm doing the, or i'm a stylist i don't associate with all the other stylists no no if you don't associate it you will be hurting yourself you know why that other stylist might have a contract to do the hair of 50,000 models and now you don't associate with them or with her how will she come and contract you she will not call she cannot do it alone we all need each other she will not be able to do it alone or maybe it's an event planning they ask you to decorate maybe the oil is so big they ask you to decorate from here to can you do it alone you will need people and there are some people you need you work for you know that i need someone that can have this synergy with me to get this job done properly so that they can refer me now that is why you must have connection with people that are doing the same kind of business with you and people that are doing related business with you like somebody that is an event planner that doesn't bake you must have strategic relationship with someone that bakes someone that cooks someone that you know you must have relationship with them a hairstylist must have relationship with somebody that does makeup a beauty spa a photographer because most times when people are going for occasion after they make their hair they'll say ah the occasion is in two days so and this is a madam do you have somebody that can do makeup for you i have somebody that is very good now if you refer people to somebody once or twice the person will feel indebted to refer to you as well that's another way of bringing people to yourself without going out by yourself you already have this customer now you refer this customer to another person to do makeup the other person that is also doing makeup will be referring customer to you and you are making money more praise the lord so have strategic or rather leverage on your connection build relationship with complementary business it will increase your scope and ability to make profits praise the lord praise jesus then track your progress like i said from the beginning if you are working you have a business and you cannot track your progress you cannot know you don't know how you are doing then there is a problem you should be able to track your progress am i doing well am i not doing well what did i do last year what did i do last two years how are my competition doing are they doing way better 100 percent better what are they doing differently should i apply it should i not apply it or should i ignore them you know you should be able to track your progress what is working what is not working what am i to focus on what am i to let go which aspect of my business is not bringing money which one is bringing much much money praise the lord praise jesus and that is how you can grow your business whether from scratch or already existing these rules if you apply them apply them diligently it will work for you and i pray that the lord will give us the wisdom because wisdom is application it's not just knowledge and uh, understanding knowledge is knowing understanding is comprehension wisdom is the application of what you know that god will give us the wisdom to apply it in jesus name now how to make money via investment i told us there are three the last one is true investment using money to make more money maybe you've you as a business owner or as a 
uh, job or you have a job maybe you want to make more money you have free money that you want to use the money is not needed at this moment you want to use it invest it in other things that is number three there are different ways you can invest and number one is the fixed term deposit we already know of that though it's no longer popular because of the way the naira is crashing by the day fixed term deposit praise the lord praise jesus before now what we now advise our uh, customers to do is instead of do fixed term deposit you convert the money to dollar and save it in dollar because it's even better praise the lord it's better when it's saved there the value of six million in 2020 is not the same value right now it has reduced it has depreciated but the value of ten thousand dollars compared to naira it has increased praise the lord so at the long run you are gaining praise god praise jesus we are not answering are we are we together yeah. <laughs> praise jesus so oh that for the fixed term deposit that's fixing a huge amount of money or money you don't need you put it in the bank they'll fix it for you and pay you interest at the end of the day praise god you don't need the money you just fix it and at the end of the day they'll pay you interest on it that's another way of making money people use their interest to feed when it was really good back in the days you see pensioners as soon as they pay them their gratuity they'll just fix it after they remove small from it then they'll be feeding from it and it was really sufficient back then it was sufficient for feeding praise god then stock you can also invest via stock money you don't have urgent need for as well you can look for an analyst that is good that can analyze stock of companies and monitor it for you and you give the person the money to trade for you to buy stock on your behalf and monitor it praise the lord real estate that is a good one that most nigerians are venturing into now real estate that is property buying landed property you know you might say in some areas the property might not have value as such and people will be like don't go to that area don't buy from there don't listen property is property and if you are selling it i can assure you, you can't sell it less if you ever have a need to sell so real estate is another good area you can leverage on to make more money this is for people who have spare cash instead of you to just keep it there let it be making money for you praise god don't just stock it in the bank or keep it in your room let it go and make more money for you then bonds bonds is just like a fixed deposit in this other way it's lending money but it's lending lend giving money to governments eh? then they'll pay you interest it's for a long period of time they'll pay you interest on it then another way to also um, invest is agriculture agriculture you can actually invest in agriculture it could be uh, land uh, what do they call it? is it land cultivation poultry beds whatever you can put money into it and with time it will start yielding results praise the lord those are the three different areas or ways you can make money i hope we understand it <laughs> praise the lord <laughs> praise jesus <laughs> thank you sir now that we have seen ways to generate income we are going straight to how to manage it because it's not just sufficient for you to generate income you must be able to manage it yes it will be as if you are working but it's falling down the hole praise god you must be able to manage the income manage it efficiently so that the right resources is channeled to the right quarter before you manage money you should understand you should have this concept in your mind that money eh, is to some people it is god why to some people it is slave it depends on where you want to place it now the bible says you can't have two master you cannot serve two master matthew 6 24 you can read that later on you can't serve two master now as christians our master is who god we already have a master so money automatically is our slave praise god and you must manage it you must manage it if you pursue money i want to pursue money i want to make this money you may never find it you just keep pursuing pursuing why because you not the money is not the master it's not the one you are pursuing instead of you to pursue god you are pursuing money 
Meanwhile, you can sit down with God and he will give you one business idea that will change your life. You will be seated, money will be dropping on your lap. Where you are sitting down, money will be dropping on your, on your hands. Praise the Lord. Now, when you think of money, you think of ideas. And how do you uh, manage this idea? Or rather, how do you manage this money? First of all, you must understand that you have to place value on your idea more than money. Now, I have an idea to own a company, a fast food company, for instance. Now, I shouldn't just see the money as the main goal. I should see that idea, which we will be just to a passion to feed hungry people and satisfy them. Maybe that's my passion. I want to feed people. Now, in the process of feeding people and meeting the need, that is where money will be coming to me. In otherwise, in otherwise, I'm not uh, opening the business because, oh, I need money. You should have an idea, an idea, and place value on that idea. Don't just see the idea, okay, I want to start a sporting center. It is money that is my uh, dream, my drive, and as such, you are pursuing money. My brother, you are pursuing money, or my sister. You must have an idea and be passionate about the idea. That is why you must ask that God give you the idea. Because any idea that God gives to you will not crash land. And you will not have to pursue it for it to work for you. Because when he gives you an idea, he would also give you the means to get it done. He will also give you the process, the stage per time. Praise the Lord. And as you are doing it, you see money coming. Money will be coming because you are just following the principles, earthly principles and spiritual principles. And you are applying it appropriately. And you see that you'll be able to manage your resources. Like I said, place value. Place value on your idea. Another one is don't waste. Okay, gather little by little. Now, you are making money. You have to learn to manage it by gathering it little. Understand that you have to gather it bit by bit. One error to two error. Two error to four error. Four error to six error. It might not be eight error. To six error. Or maybe seven error. Praise God. We don't pray to make loss. But the days where they are lost, you bounce back. That's why you need to keep track and move it from 8 Naira to 16 Naira. My mom once said something. He said, anybody that cannot make 1 Naira turn to 2 Naira, 2 Naira to 4 Naira. That person cannot make 1 million turn to 2 million. Because it has to start from small. Little by little. Step by step. You cannot just start a business. Now you expect it to just go from... No, it can't, it can't work. Step by step, small. Uh, little, they say little drop of water can make an, an ocean. If a drop of water starts dropping in this place now, you might not take it seriously, but come back in three days. Come back in three days. This place will probably be flooded if it continuously drops. So that is why you must, little by little, you should understand that you have to gather it little by little. And when gathering little by little, you have to have something at the back of your mind. Can God trust you with little? Some of us will keep praying, God, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. But you are not managing the little that is with you. You are not managing it appropriately. And God cannot give you what you cannot manage. Pastor Wisdom used to say that if somebody is asking for something big and the person cannot do, God will not give it to that person. You have to manage little by little. Praise the Lord. Now, he gives you a thousand error. You give him his own. You manage the other one appropriately. He will have confidence in you. Oh, this my child is doing well. So it will be, okay, let me give him more. He gives you another one. You give him his own. And, you know, you manage the others. Some of us, we don't give God his own. And we think we can grow rich. No. Because God cannot give you above what you can manage. He's giving you a thousand naira now, and you cannot give him hundred naira tight. You make profits at the end of the day. You don't give him his own and say, okay, this one goes to the house of God, to the work of God, so that it can be done. You understand? You are leaving his work behind and you are chasing money. Praise God. That is what it means. 
So we have to learn to manage money. Put more the money under your control. Money, I control you. You can't control me. You can't rise above me. Praise God. And that is when money will be subdued. And money is attracted to people that can manage it efficiently. Not people who spend any hour. Praise the Lord. Not people who spend any hour. Let me quickly rush. Don't waste the crumb. Make good use of every resources you get. Make good use of every resources you get. Praise the Lord. Every resources. You'll be thinking, oh, it's just 200 naira. It's just 400 naira. It's just 300 naira. But that just times it. Do you know that each and every one of us here, we are already millionaires? We may not know. We are already millionaires. If you calculate the number of money that have run through your hand, you are 10 times millionaire already. Praise the Lord. Now, for you to really make it clear, if you times the number of years you've lived on earth by, let's use 200 naira. You know, maybe you are 30 years old, times 365 days, times 200 naira. Just times it. You see how much. I mean, why this 200 naira? Go and buy biscuits. You are just starting a biscuit, a business. Go and buy a recharge card. You are calling. You know, uh, I made more profit. I made more profit today. For some ladies, they go to boutique and shop down the boutique. I make profit today. Praise the Lord. They shop down the boutique. That's not how to grow a business. You don't manage money like that. Because if you keep buying things you don't need, the day you will need something, you don't have the money to buy it. That is why you must manage the money that comes to you. Any money that comes to you must be appropriately apportioned for. There is a 50, 20, 30 uh, method uh, uh, we usually use. 50, 30, 20. You must save 20%. You must save 50% for your expenditure. Things that you need to do, a must do. You must eat, you must clothes, you must feed, you must pay school fees, you must, you know. Then the other 30%, you keep it for emergency and other things that might come up. Praise the Lord. It depends on how your income comes. You can decide to increase it to 30, 20, 50, or you can swap it anyway, but ensure that you are saving. Ensure that you are keeping money. Ensure you are not spending everything you are earning. Praise the Lord. Because that business must continually go on. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. So, try and manage the crumbs. The crumbs that come in, manage it. And also, don't forget to gather little by little. And don't forget prayers. The place of prayers we should pray for our investment. Pray for your business. Pray. Because prayers is what would uh, 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 keep the storm. After you've paid your tithes, fine. The Bible has already said that it would stop the devourer. The devourer is already out. But you need to call those customers. You need to call them into your business premises. You cannot just be doing your business and you are not calling forth customers. You need to call the uh, angels of heaven that they should bring customers to your business. And God should make you exceptional. Even when you are doing that, your business, the little, little things that will make you exceptional, it should give you the idea. And you will be doing great. Praise the Lord. I would like to conclude this whole seminar with the word that with this word the difference between the rich and the poor is that they manage time and manage money thank you